Good morning. Welcome to Saturday. Today's the day that we're hoping to get the trailer shed finished. It's basically, um, if you didn't know, just a little annex to our current carport slash potting shed, which will enable us to keep our trailers and ride on lawn mowers outside of that building to create more space for other things. Um, Will started off by making brackets for the final roof beam that we need to put up. He decided that anything that he could buy commercially wasn't going to be as good as something he could make. It has to span quite a distance, that beam, but also bear the weight of the roof. So he's trying to make something strong, and whilst he's getting on with that, I'm going to go and water all the little plants, and hopefully... I'll keep you updated as the day goes on so that by the end of the day I'll be able to show you maybe the finished product. This is my makeshift metalworking workshop where I made the brackets. This is uh, my uh, welder, my grinder and my angle grinder. Not a bad place to work on a lovely sunny day like today. So we want to run a beam along here and to achieve that I've made some brackets which will attach to this beam here and which will uh, hold the piece of wood like that. Let me show you these brackets in more detail. I welded them out of a piece of old steel that I acquired. Uh, we have two of them here. They're a bit rough, but they'll certainly, uh, hopefully, do the job. The wood's been measured up, and the brackets are on either end. Now what we're going to do is attach the brackets to the wood, and attach the bracket Oh. And with not a little effort, we've got the middle beam up, so now we can start putting up the roof. And what you've just been watching is me putting the finishing touches to our new trailer and mower store. Let me give you a quick tour. So this is how it looks from the front. That's the house. This is my potting shed. And up until now, a lot of this equipment was in the potting shed. So I've now cleared space for it. So we have my two garden trailers, our car trailer, my two ride on lawn mowers and a rotivator. I'm also going to put my petrol lawn mower there, hand, uh, push mower, um, because I don't use it very often and it's just as well to go there. So this is what it looks like. We take a closer look. We've got the big poles, which were reclaimed all of the roof timbers which were reclaimed, the tin metal roof which was reclaimed, the brackets which Will made again out of reclaimed metal, the screws and stuff we already had so and um, those little brackets there we already had. We got um, spares when we did the generator cover so actually all in all this project I think more or less was completely free which I like, especially when you, if you've been with me for a while now, realise that I've had a lot of unexpected and unwanted expense recently, what with one thing and another, so free is music to my ears. And uh, if we go in amongst it all, so you can see the two mowers I currently have are nice and under cover, my little trailer is nice and under cover, so hopefully that will help protected a bit from the ravages of the weather. Uh, it is Sunday today, so we didn't quite finish it off yesterday as I had hoped, 
but um, that's not to say that that's because we weren't working hard. Will in particular has worked very hard on this project. When it comes to this sort of thing, you know, there's only so many tools, only so many ladders and um, this, that and the other. So I tend to end up being the, um, the lackey <laughs> to Will's superior skills. So I hand him stuff and steady the ladder and... Um, but I do help to puzzle out some of the engineering and construction puzzles. I'm quite good at thinking through how we're going to do something. Will's better at actually doing it, but I'm quite good at motivating and also assisting. <laughs> so yes, um, I'm just sort of looking up. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, and now We've kind of been working our way up. So first of all, we did the little tiny cover for the generator, which in the end, currently we don't really need. We've then made this cover, which is slightly bigger. And all of that's working up to our major project, which is the wood store. We do now have all of the materials required to make the frame. Um, so that is going to be our next big project and this is probably a good test run. It gave us a good idea of the methodology that we might use when we're making that or a modified version of it. Obviously that's a much bigger project, it's quite a large building. But the principles are very simple, the principles are the same. So hopefully now we've done it twice, we can do it a third time. Thank you. I'm taking the opportunity to do a bit of general maintenance on the water tank which collects water from the roof of our library building. This is essentially what I call it a giant tea strainer. This sits within the tank filtering the water that comes through the drain pipe. It's uh, not looking that bad actually. I, I tapped it out and I'm going to rinse it but even when I first got it out it wasn't looking that bad. Now what I'm going to do is turn my hose pipe up to max and I'm going to give it a bit of a wash. Better. I'm also grabbing my secateurs because I noticed that um, the acacia tree, which is what causes most of that build-up in the net. It's a little bit more overgrown than I'd like it to be, so hopefully I can give it a bit of a haircut. Let's go up there together. Here I am, balanced rather awkwardly. We're at the top of the water tank. Uh, there's the ground beneath my feet. There's the roof to our new trailer store. And this is the section where the drain pipe goes into the water tank, which is currently full. I'm just going to try and slot this back in here, but I probably won't be able to film, so just give me a sec. Rather sadly for them, some ants decided to build a home here. I've just disturbed but uh, fingers crossed they'll settle down. You can see some of them are 
taking away some of the eggs as we speak or maybe even trying to put them back again. Let's hope they manage it, they aren't doing any harm. Unfortunately this comes with screws, one on this side, one up there which you, I can't make you see. <laughs> so now I'm going to do those up and then tackle some of this which is a bit in the way, some of this tree. I don't know how well you can see me. Anyway that's that all done, I've put the tea strainer back in the tank. Uh, I've given the tank a little bit of clean on the top where it's collected some of that acacia debris. I've pruned what I can reach from where I've been stood. Uh, I'm now going to head back down to the ground and uh, this is all part, by the way, in case you didn't realise, this is all part of our general maintenance that we do around the property because we're completely off grid for water. So the only water that goes into the house, except for the toilet, <laughs> comes from the rainwater that we collect. We've got two tanks one on the library building and one connected to the house roof and they together through pumps are fed up to the main tank which feeds the house taps through gravity. So it's important to keep the tank system in as good a condition as we can to ensure that we are collecting every last drop of rainfall. The last thing that we'll do is clear the gutter which is the other side of that plank of wood but it is, it is very far from off the ground essentially the height of a two-story building so I prefer to do that when we're both here so I won't be doing that on my own but I might do it this afternoon when Will gets back from work. I thought I would deliver an update on the uh, sheepskins which I acquired and you might have seen in a uh, in a recent vlog. Last you saw they were being salted and cleaned and they have now been washed which is a surprisingly laborious process. This is one, this is another, this is some very dirty water, this is the hose, this is the wool wash, now that is some of the salt that came off the skins, that is another one, they become very heavy once they have been washed and a lot of uh, a lot of dirt and fat and bits of uh, mud and, and and other things twigs and so on come out of them but they're looking a lot cleaner there's still quite a lot to do they really need to be trimmed around the edges um, 
given a comb to get all the remaining little bits of mud and so on out of them. Then probably given another wash. We have some alum which they need to be cured with and then hopefully they will be nice sheepskin rugs.